In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, I think I know the reason. The reason why Denver drivers are the sixth worst drivers in the country. <laughs> no, I do. I think I know what it is. It's because you have to wait so often when you're driving. So let me just, instead of just tell you what I mean by that, let me show you. But I need your help. I need you to do something right now. I want you to act as if you are driving your car. Put your hands out, the steering wheel, okay? Wait, before you do that, what do you have to do first? Well, it'd be starting would be good. That's a good idea. So you start the car, okay? Wherever that looks like, you know, push the button or whatever it is. But put your seatbelt on, okay? Put your seatbelt on, okay? Okay, get your, get your hands on your wheel. You ready? Okay, we're going to be driving. So I'm going to give you a few examples of having to wait so long, which is why you've become the sixth worst drivers in the country. So you're riding here, okay? You start to go. You're driving, okay? You're driving. You're about to get on the highway, and this is what happens. Go. Stop. Go. Say, go. Come on. You're driving. Stop. Go. Okay, go, go, stop. Go. Keep, keep going. Stop. Why do y'all put a light on the entrance ramp to the, to the highway? It makes no sense. I don't understand everyone's, you're getting on there and you're starting to drive and you have to stop and you have to wait. And then you, the red light turns green and you go and you stop and you wait and you go and you stop until finally you make it. And this is what happens. The light turns green and what do you do? You slam on your accelerator and you take off only to find that the highway is stopped. <laughs> right? So you're stopped and you're just waiting. And because this is I-25, right? I mean, I-25 is the worst highway I've ever seen. You're up, you're on I-25, and you're just kind of barely moving along. And, and I think someone said this, you act as if you were given this lane as your birthright. <laughs> and everyone is supposed to try to get in, but it's yours. And so you hold on to it, and then you're going along, and just until finally and stuff, that you get off the highway. Thank God you're off the highway. And now you're driving. Get, get your steering wheels. Come on. Don't, you're still driving. You can't just, you don't have a self-driving car. <sighs> okay, so you're driving your car and you're going along here and you get off and you come in toward a major intersection, two major streets, and you're going to turn left. Okay, you already, you already know what I'm talking about, don't you? So you come up to this and you're about eight cars back from turning left. And so the light turns green, the little, you know, little turn signal in green. And how many cars make it? Like two. And that's a good. Okay, so you're like, oh, I can't believe it. And then the next time it turns green, the car up there is looking at their phone. And they don't go until right when it turns red and they go. And you're like, no! Until finally you get up and you're clear about the third car. And so you're, I'm going to make it this time. And so you get up, and right when it turns green, the car goes, and it turns red as you're coming to it, but you don't care. So you just slam on your accelerator, and you take off through the intersection, and the people are honking you, but you don't care, because you're going to make that stupid light, which is why you're the worst drivers, six worst drivers in the country. <laughs> because you have to wait. Now, why am I talking about waiting in cars? Because today, we hear about a man named Simeon. And he was told about this promise that he would actually see this, the consolation of Israel, of, of the Messiah. And he'd been waiting and waiting. He waited longer than any of you have ever waited in I-25. He's waited any longer than any of you have actually made through one of those turn signals. And that's a long time. But he waited and he was faithful in that. So I want you to look at your gospel lesson for a moment here. And he's being led by the Spirit, and he comes into the temple. And he knows he's been waiting for so long, but he still believes. And right before him comes Mary and Joseph and Jesus. And he says... To God, Master, now you're dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have presented in the presence of all peoples, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. And I love Mary and Joseph's reaction to this. 
Look at this right after this. This is that, that third paragraph down. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. No, they weren't amazed. They were shocked. I mean, amazed is kind of a, let's translate it a little better, being like, what in the heck? This guy out of nowhere comes and takes their child and says these things about it. Now, you know that Mary and Joseph experienced angels. They know that he is the one to come. They know by the Holy Spirit that this child was born. They know that. But here in their journey, they're doing what is right. And God is speaking to them through Simeon, through his story, and telling them about this child. And they are amazed and shocked and awestruck, probably sitting there, what does that mean? For the child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. The sword will pierce your own soul too. So here is this hope and this sorrow and this revelation to them. Now, why is this important to us? Because you and I are also waiting. We are. We're waiting. How many of you want a new body? Anybody? How many of you are looking forward to actually having some perfect people around here? Right? You are, right? I mean, so some of you could just get your act together. It'd be great. I mean, we live in an imperfect world, and self-included. Anyway, you, we live in this imperfect world. We look forward to this redemption, this new life where, where things will be right. Our bodies will be whole, and our relationships will be whole. We can't wait to see the coming of Jesus, that we will be made whole in heaven. You're still waiting, aren't you? <laughs> We're still waiting for this. We're waiting longer than I-25. You're still waiting. But in the midst of waiting, what is important for us to hear is this. Is that we have a glimpse of this God who is with us. We get a glimpse, just like Mary and Joseph did, of what, that God does not leave them alone. That God was with them. You see, in other people's stories... When they got a glimpse of who God was, they shared that story. Simeon chose to share. He could have kept it to himself. He could have believed and saw the Messiah and said, yes, God, that's great, and walked away. But he chose to share that story with Mary and Joseph intentionally. And it was a story of God had revealed to them and shared about their son. And it had good parts and it had struggles. How many of y'all have stories like that? God has come to you in their struggles and in your good parts and is with you. But are you sharing that glimpse of what God has done in your life with others? Are you sharing it so others may be lifted up and encouraged? Because that's what he did for Mary and Joseph. He gave them hope. Because what's about to happen to Mary and Joseph? Where are they about to go? Egypt, Egypt right? They're about to run away. They have to escape. They're about to go through some pretty hard trials in life, aren't they? They're about to go through. And yes, they tell the story that he raises and it's a great child and stuff there and God is with him and stuff there, but they go through life. And there's this hope, though, the encouragement they've heard from the shepherds, they've heard from the angels, and now from Simeon, that God is with them because somebody was willing to share their story. This God has come to you. Did you see Him? When you were in life and struggling, did you get the peace of the Lord with you? Did the Holy Spirit walk with you in the waiting times in your life? Did you feel that God was not, that actually was present with you? And you, when you've experienced that in your life, have you taken that story 
of your relationship and engagement with the Messiah and if you told it to somebody else. Because this is what's needed. When you share that story with you in the midst of a struggle that you're having, we encourage the other. We help you by sharing our story. Not beating our story into somebody and telling them it's got to be our story. Simeon didn't go, okay, you've got to wait like I do. He just shared a story. He shared the promise that God made and how it happened. And he was praising God for this revelation. And so it is with you and I. We're called to take in the midst of our waiting for our Lord to come to us. He reveals himself to us at different times in our life. I want you to take that. Write it down. Share it with somebody. Share that story of God's faithfulness to you. It doesn't mean that that's the way God is going to be for somebody else. I'm not saying that, right? But what I'm saying is that you're testifying to the faithfulness of God in your life. And when you do that, I promise it becomes an encouragement to somebody else. Now, they may be like Mary and Joseph, and they may look at you like amazed, right? Awestruck. They may not tell you that at that moment, but you never know what inside is going on with somebody. And that story helped them to wait. To wait for the Lord's coming in their life, in their way. And in so doing, your witness becomes not only encouragement, but a testimony and the praise of God's faithfulness so that they now are open to what God may be doing in their life. And they too may share their story with somebody else. My hope as a church is that we will do this, that we may be waiting as we are waiting for the Lord, as we come to this table, receive this communion, give praise to God, go out, and as we encounter the living Lord present in the Holy Spirit in different times in our life, May you and I share that story with one another, not only in this church, but in this community around us. So they may also hear of God's faithfulness in their life and be open to what God may be doing. So they too may wait expectantly with a hope that is the confidence in our Lord Jesus Christ who gives them and us and this whole world the opportunity to live forever. Because look at Hebrews for a second here. I want you to do the last thing. In Hebrews it says, Since God's children share faith, flesh, and blood, Jesus himself likewise shared the same things, so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery, by fear of death. You and I have seen new life in Jesus Christ. Share that story so others who are imprisoned by death may know that there is life and they too may wait with the confidence because they have seen the glory of God as Simeon did and as you have because you and I were willing to share that story so they too may put their faith and hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.